This video's featured comment goes out to Boggy Yob. Leave a comment for your chance to be featured in the next video. Hey y'all, Knack here. So we got some news about Side Order a few days ago, and oh boy, it is amazing. There's a ton of lore-related theories I could make from this trailer alone. However, the most impactful new bit of information for me and tons of other people was this right here. Yeah, Deadfish actually in game. I've always found their backstory so interesting and now they're actually going to be a part of this story. I was honestly freaking out when I first saw them. Deadfish has been a favorite character of mine in the background. I love their music and now they're actually here. They've never shown up as a character in game before, so this is whole new territory. But who exactly is Deadfish? Why are they here? Well, there's a ton of Deadfish lore and it's all insanely interesting. I even have a few ideas for them in the story. Before we dive into anything, let's first get a good understanding of Deadfish's past. So, Deadfish was an up and coming DJ who had a pretty promising career. According to Hakata Walker in a Japanese exclusive interview, Deadfish was having doubts and conflicts about their music and their personal life. Because of that, they started searching for a way to rid themselves of those personal obstacles in search of musical perfection. Eventually, they stumbled upon the Kamabo Corporation and they had the perfect solution for them. Why and what was that solution exactly? Well, Deadfish wanted to become sanitized. They weren't always sanitized and actually saw the sanitization process as a way for them to solely devote their life to music. Honestly, that's insane dedication, especially considering what sanitization usually does to Octarian kind. Now, this article doesn't specifically say whether she wanted to and she asked to become sanitized or if she was somehow found and forced to be sanitized, but Deadfish just kind of saw it as a thing that worked out in the end, so it wasn't all bad. Okay, so is Deadfish evil? Well, all that's revealed about sanitization is that, quote, sanitization is to purge life's energy so that they no longer cause unnecessary hesitation and instability in the mind, and to become part of the loyal Kamabo Corporation, unquote. The wiki mentions that one would lose all memories as well, but I couldn't find a source that 100% verifies that. If I'm wrong, let me know, but I really didn't see anything saying that. Anyways, the whole becoming part of the Kamabo Corporation part could be seen as, oh my gosh, dead fish is evil and brainwashed, they're working for Tardar, but I don't think that's true. Really? Realistically, if Deadfish had absolutely zero free will because they were sanitized, like how most of us see sanitization doing, why are they still making music? Why wouldn't Tartar just make them into something that could benefit his plan? Well, I believe that becoming sanitized doesn't fully make you into a mindless zombie. That does bring up the question of why were the sanitized octolings helping Tartar though? Maybe they were just more susceptible to doing what he said. I mean, we literally see Deadfish talking like a regular person in the side order trailer. Although it doesn't say or confirm it in any media, there are some theories of them being partially sanitized. I mainly say this because in their introduction post it says, though little of their former self remains, and then some more stuff, but like, this could mean one of two things. Either that being sanitized isn't as brainwashy as we all believe, or that Deadfish wasn't fully sanitized for some reason. Partial sanitization does certainly exist. We saw it with Captain 3 during Octo Expansion, but it was to a much lesser extent than Deadfish. So, in my opinion, sanitization doesn't have clear boundaries or rules yet, so it's kind of difficult to determine how sanitized Deadfish is. All that aside though, it worked out really well for Deadfish. In the first anniversary of Splatoon 2's interview translation, it states that, alright, so before I read this quote, I want to mention that it uses different pronouns than what the Twitter post used. Now, I'm going to use the current pronouns instead of the ones that were used in the translation, um, so that's why my words don't match up to what the actual thing says, but it's just a pronoun swap since I'd rather say they, them in this situation. It doesn't really matter anyway. They don't think about what they want others to hear, but rather gives form to what comes out of their inner self. So the process worked out for them completely. I want to take a side note and mention that Deadfish's songs could also have meaning behind their names. However, I want to mention before we get anywhere in this theory that in the anniversary interview for Splatoon 2, they mentioned that the songs were created without Deadfish in mind and that Deadfish was only added in later to add to the worldview. The songs could still mean something though, it's just that Deadfish was created as an afterthought. Just think about it though, a song being titled Regret just has to have some meaning behind it, right? Well, it's also confirmed that the songs were just named after how they make you feel by the devs, so... Who really knows? To be fair though, the numbering has always interested me, and I've always been curious as to why certain number of tracks are missing. That has to mean something, they wouldn't just randomly decide, oh yeah, let's just leave out these numbers. There are missing numbers and that has to mean something important. Okay, so that was a lot of just talking about dead fish and sanitization. They have a ton of potential for even more lore, and I'm excited about their inclusion in the story revealing more about them, their past, and sanitization as a whole. If I got anything wrong, again, let me know in the comments. Sanitization is such a weird topic that isn't fully 
delved into. So yeah, give me your theories if you have any. Uh, this video is not done though. Onto what they're doing here in the story. First, let's talk about their name being revealed as Oct. I want to jump in and say that this has a ton of implications. Oct is the German word for eight, like Agent Eight. Is Deadfish Agent Eight? Could they be an alternate timeline version of them? Okay. These are all crazy ideas and insanely fun to think about, but let's try to be logical. At first, I had the idea of them being the original test subject 8, and even like the idea of them being an alternate version of Agent 8, but I highly doubt both of those. I honestly think their name might be Ox just because of the whole they're an octoling and the whole eight arms thing, just a very on the nose joke. I think realistically that the name means nothing and it's just a joke or just a throwaway gag, but come on, we have a character that goes by eight. So someone calling themselves eight as well must mean something. Realistic or not, I really feel like the name has some sort of meaning. Maybe they're giving us a fake name though. Well, I kind of doubt that because, um, their name has been revealed as Oct for a long time now. We've known for five years at least. In Haikata Walker, they have a character section and it reveals their name as Aito Mizuta. In the Japanese trailer, it says their name is Mizuta, so this hasn't changed. Aito is, according to the wiki, the Japanese rendering of the German word Oct. So this is just something we haven't really cared about until now, mainly because Haikata Walker, along with the rest of Splatoon lore information, is locked behind a language barrier. Oh yeah, I want to mention thanks to Raskas for making any of this video possible. Without them, a good portion of Splatoon's lore would like never find its way to the West. It's not just Raskas, there are a lot of other translators, but I really appreciate all of them. And uh, yeah, thank you for making this possible. They have nothing to do with this video. I just want to thank them for letting us enjoy the lore. Does this mean Deadfish's real name is Axe without the shadow of a doubt? No, but I mean, I really think it's their real name. Sure, Deadfish as a person is shrouded in mystery, but I feel like their original self wasn't really ever hidden, right? What about them now though? Well, Deadfish is missing, which means after entering Kamaboko and becoming sanitized, nobody has heard from them. Well, the way their bio is written makes it seem like it's talking about their past self, a diligent and hardworking octoling who was seriously devoted to music. To be fair, it is also possible that it's talking about how current Deadfish might be missing as well, so who really knows which version of Deadfish is missing. I like to think it's the person that they used to be, but right now I think it's just up to interpretation. They also know Marina somehow. They mentioned that the two go way back. How? Maybe they knew each other from Marina's days in DJ Octavia's Wasabi Supply Unit? Marina was pretty well known in Octoling society for being an amazing engineer and enhancing the great Octo weapons. Maybe Oct has a history of being in the Octoling military as well. Maybe during Captain Three's battle with Octavio, when Marina heard Calamari Incantation decided to run away to Mount Nantai, Oct was in a similar situation. Maybe the song changed them into who they were before they were sanitized. Marina may have even tried to spread the word to those she cared about. If they were childhood friends, this would definitely be the case. Music, specifically DJing, is something they both have in common, so I believe they must share a history of music together somehow. Marina has never mentioned any of this, or even Oct as a whole, but like, they know each other somehow. Why hasn't Marina mentioned them? Maybe it's a memory Marina would rather leave behind. Onto what the heck is happening here? Oct mentions being another bystander that got sucked in. What does that mean? It could just mean that they were just someone who got involved in something that didn't have anything to do with them, but maybe it means more. Maybe Side Order takes place in a different place. Not even Inkopolis. Like, yeah, we see Inkopolis Square, but it's looking rather... not normal. Octo Expansion took place at the same time as Splatoon 2's Hero Mode, so maybe this is the same way. If it is, why wouldn't anyone say anything about the fact that Inkopolis Square is being completely destroyed? Well, maybe this takes place in another dimension. Maybe an alternate reality where chaos lost against order. Maybe they're in a computer or somehow in some sort of simulation. Maybe they're in Marina's mind searching for her real self. Maybe that's where Deadfish has been this whole time. Honestly, there's so many fun theories you could come up with to explain where they are. Like, no, seriously, why is Pearl a robot? In Octo Expansion, she was just on a phone, so I was so excited to see her, and now she's just a robot. Okay, no, this is actually still super cool, and she's still super expressive. It's fine. I'm just kind of surprised. The Splatoon Twitter page talks about it, but they don't review any information. They're just like, oh man, why is Pearl a robot? Which is the question we're all asking. Okay, gosh. Well, that's all I have to say about Deadfish. Uh, this video was a weird mix of lore and speculation, but I hope you were at least able to enjoy it. Uh, if everything I said in this was wrong, well, at least there will be outdated lore information. If you have any ideas of your own or comments, about Oct, please leave a comment. It really helps me out, and honestly, you all are really creative, and I love reading your theories and thoughts. Again, a comment will get featured in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.